Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. Today we've got an interesting one. This is the splined hub tapered um, that goes in the flywheel on a 720 diesel John Deere. Um, and the customer asked me to, he brought me a new one, a new blank. So I didn't even have to make this part, but I need to put in the slot, well, the keyway, 180 degree apart keyways, one on each side, and these slots that clear the bolts in the, in the flywheel. So to do that, we're going to be using our uh, Van Norman uh, dividing head. I've actually got two different dividing heads that turn, rotate in different ways. This one, this one turns, you know, if it's sitting on the table, turns this way, and I got another one that goes up and down this way. So we're going to use the Van Norman, which goes this way to the table. So let's get that set up and uh, get this chucked up and get moving. Okay, just to walk you through what I did there. We bolted our dividing head to the table, and actually the table, before you do anything like that, and you probably saw me wipe it off with my hand, that picks up any of the fine particles, and, and you be careful with that, because you can get slivers. But you stone your table first. Take the high points off. It takes the ridges off, you know, anything odd. It'll clean that up. Don't stone it too much because you'll actually, you could dig into your table and make it, you know, wavy. So you just a light stoning, just take off your high spots, bolt your head down, and then I just, this is a piece of uh, 4140 pre-hard that I just chucked up in there, and I know it's pretty true, um, and I just ran back and forth on the length of that to get myself, I'm within one thousandths over this whole length here which is, is close enough for this, this job. Um, and in fact, we're only using a little bit of it, so we're about a half thou off. Not a big deal. So that's indicated in. That's, that's uh, tightened down to the table. A, a dividing head, I want to talk about this a little bit. Almost every dividing head I've ever used, um, in fact, they should almost all be this way, except for, I know there's a few that are a little different, but it's 40 cranks on your plate to one complete revolution on your, on your spindle. So it's 40 to one, and these dividing plates are so you can do multiple locations. I mean, they're, they're, there's a lot of calculation to it. I'm only doing four positions, four features, so I need 10 complete cranks. I don't need to set up my stops and and any of that. I just need to pick a hole and stick with that one all the way around. So I'll do 10 cranks, stop at that same hole. Pretty simple for this job. Um, eventually we'll get into something where we need to use, get into the fun stuff and set the dividing head that way, but um, for this, this is how we're going to do it. So with that, now we set up our, our tail stock for the dividing head which is right here, I'll get that cleaned up. And in order to do this job correctly, okay, I think I'm done bending over now. I made this, this plate, this adapter, center drilled for our tailstock, and it fits in here, nice and snug. This is something I do quite frequently on the lathe also, if I've got some, some, uh, tubing or something that I need to hold um, and turn the outside of it. I make a, make a plug adapter like this with a center drill. And that really does work really well, holds it true, um, works, works exceptionally well. So that's what we're going to do here. 
just to hold this thing true. So let me get that in there, get the tailstock set up, and we'll go from there. Okay, so you saw me rotate it there. That was, I was checking the run out, and we were really good. For, for what we're doing here, we're actually beautiful. Beautiful run out. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my adapter out. And I'm going to use my wobble edge finder here to find my edge, and then I'll figure out my side from there. So let's uh, get that working. Now with these edge finders, let me bring you in so you can see, maybe. Maybe you can see that. You see it's wobbling there. You bring it in, touch it, touch it, touch it, keep it coming. It'll straighten out, it'll stop wobbling. And there we've stopped wobbling all together. And what I do, I just keep it going just a little further because it does create an air gap and it will stop wobbling. I've already gone a thou past and there it offsets. So it's catching, then I just back it up and that was only about four tenths, according to my my uh, digital readout here. So now I drop it down. And this is a half inch indicator, so we turn it 250 thousandths, and then re-zero. And then we come over here, and this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do here to find my center is I'm actually going to put my, my round stock back in there. And we're going to utilize that, that round stock to find our center. Just because I go too far, I don't know. With the taper, it's kind of difficult to get your get your center. So let's just put this guy back in. Lighten it down nice and snug. And then do it again. This time off of our shaft. Now, can you guys see that? Yeah, a little bit. So same thing, bring it in, it kicks off on you, back it off just a touch until it straightens back out to zero. And you can watch that on your digital readout. And that's where I want to be for that. Bring it up, 250 thousandths because this is a half inch indicator. Now, I need to be centered. So, I'm going to grab my one inch micrometer here, just double check my shaft, and I'm going to measure it where I'm at with that indicator. So, I am Three thousandths undersize. So I need to come over three seventy three five. Which is one and a half under. Because you're going half your distance. So I should be perfect on center right there. 
That's if I did my math right and everything else right. So now I'm going to get the part back up in there. We'll get it indicated or set set at our starting point because these the keyways will do those first. They are in line with I can't remember if it's a if it's in line with a here or here, but they're 180 degrees apart. So I'll get that set up and get that figured out, and then we'll start cutting that keyway. Okay, so we have a 3 8 inch keyway that's 140 thousandths deep. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to find my starting point. There. And we're going to crank it down till the bottom touches, the bottom of the taper. And then I'm going to go in a hundred thousandths, cut my two inch, it's two and three A's. And then I'll go in the other 35 and finish it off. So let's uh, get that started. Okay, so we got our two keyways cut, 180 degrees off center. Um, usually when I do a keyway, I use an undersized end mill. Um, you know, this is a 3 ace keyway. And so I would generally use, well, not, probably a 5 16 But this isn't requiring that perfect of a fit. Um, where I need to have it one thou under or right at. So I just used a two flute three ace end mill and the three ace two flute seems to give me about the perfect width when I'm doing stuff like this. Um, a four flute will get me, generally gets me a little bit wider than a two flute will. And so I had a nice, and I slid that key in there. I mean, it was a nice, it holds on to it pretty good. So um, I'm not concerned about that at all. That'll be a perfect fit. So now what we're going to do, and I don't, if you paid attention, when I rotated that, I turned my crank 20 times and landed on the exact same hole. That's 180 degrees. Now I need to go 90 degrees and mill in these flats. And this is a bolt clearance flat because there's a, a bolts in the flywheel that clamp down on this hub once it's sucked in with this big square nut that goes on there and and there's a lot to this weird design. Um, but now we're going to turn it 10 times to get my 90 degrees. And I'll switch out my cutter to, uh, I'll figure out what size I need there. And we'll set our depth and cut that. Okay, so I turned my, my uh, dividing head over here 10 cranks to get me 90 degrees. I set my cutter. This is a one inch, two flute end mill, and we need to go in from the high side 220 thousandths and just mill a flat here and on the opposite side. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, touch that off, and I'll back it out, take it down 100, make a cut, take it back, or drop it down another 100 and probably finish it off 120 and make the finished cut. So let's get started.
is, all milled up. So let's pull this bad boy out. The next thing we got to do is I got to put the vise back on the table because I'm going to use a slitting saw to split it. Um, I need to put a split in it so that when it goes in, it's tapered. When they tighten that square nut that goes up on here, it clamps down. And then after that, then they put the bolts through and tighten that up. So let's uh, get this out of here. And then last time I did a video on indicating in the vise, I didn't do it exactly the way you should do it because I never took the vise off the table. I just, I wanted to check it as it sat on the table. I barely ever take it off. So now that we've got the table off or clean, everything's off of it. Well, we've got to pull our dividing head. I'm going to shoot another quick video on how to properly indicate your tram your head, tram your table, and then check your vice to that. So I'm going to pull this stuff off, and then I'm going to go ahead and shoot that other video, and then I'll come back to this. So this video will be the completion of this thing. And if you want to see the other video I'm going to shoot here in the middle, um, that'll be the next one that gets uploaded. Okay, we're back from shooting next week's video. Um, you can see I took my long sleeve shirt off. It's, it's getting nice out, like really nice. Um, we had 80 degrees here yesterday, which is a huge improvement over what we've had. But it's so dry here um, that we're in the risk of forest fires. And, and we're in a pretty, pretty high uh, risk area here. Um, we had a fire go through in early 80, 80, 81, somewhere in there, the early 80s, um, and destroy a lot of property and actually came right through where my shop is. I built this in 2006. Um, and you can still see where the fire had gone through. So pretty cool little history there. But uh, um, anyway, we got, we're back from doing the tramming video, and now we got the vise in here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put this in here just like this in the vise. And we're going to use a slitting saw to split this. Um, this is the narrowest one I have. It's an eighth inch and it should be totally fine. Um, it should give them exactly what they need for clamping force. So let's uh, go ahead and get this all set up and get going. Split coupling uh, that goes in the flywheel on the 720 John Deere diesel. Um, so it goes in the flywheel, gets cinched up, that pulls the taper, locks it onto the shaft, and then there's two bolts that clamp through the flywheel itself to hold the whole thing together. Pretty easy, um, fun little job. And uh, you got to see the dividing head. Um, I'll probably be doing more videos eventually on the dividing head showing the different mathematics of how to get your multiple positions and all that fun stuff. It's, it's not that complicated once you get used to it. So with that, I'm going to end the video here. I'm going to get cleaned up and uh, move on to the next job. Um, and uh, make sure you check out next week's video on, on the uh, tramming the mill head. Um, hopefully that one um, makes more sense to people. <laughs> but um, like I said, it's not hard to do. It's, it's a pretty simple process. So with that, uh, please check out our website, www.toppermachine.com. And please like, subscribe, and share. Like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share, share our content. Share it around. Let's uh, help get this stuff uh, channel growing a little more. And uh, as long as you guys want to see this stuff, I'll keep doing it. So with that, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.